Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to Chapter 2 of Land of the Night, the addendum to Mom Moose Quest Paradox RPG Confrontation Chapter. And in Chapter 2 we wake up to Kazuya here. Alright. Now that I've come to, I'm in some room I don't recognize. The construction seems really old. Something like something out of the Middle Ages or Early Modern period. He's gonna say Middle Ages or Early Modern period a lot. But anyway. Why he's here, he doesn't really know. So what is this place? He remembers he was out working, as usual. And he finished up a job, and immediately after that, all of a sudden, before his eyes, a black vortex appeared. Then he was drawn into the vortex. And he doesn't remember anything beyond that. Just what happened and what is this old building? Well, this isn't the first time he's been thrown into a situation that's a bit bizarre. So let's start by investigating our surroundings. Whatever game he comes from, it must be an investigative game or something. Anyway, inside the wardrobe is women's clothes. The designs are really old. Again, Middle Ages or early modern period. From the consistency of the cloth and cloth and the the, the uh, style of the tailoring, it's definitely not very pricey either. Well, the design and composition setting aside, set aside, they don't seem all that old themselves. But what are these old style of clothes doing here? Who made them? Well, well, this is my gun, isn't it? We get the Rebellion K. I don't have any heavy arms, and I can't use magic. Even if it's just my trusty sidearm. That makes me feel a little better. I also don't have the magical equipment I usually have when going out on jobs. You know, what I had when I left. When I got drawn in. Ah, oh, this is rough. That stuff was pretty convenient. So Kazuya's job is as a devil hunter. He takes requests from people to eliminate demons. Now once upon a time he was able to use magic, but after a certain affair he lost that ability. But he still has a lot of experience dealing with demons. Most demons he doesn't need magic to deal with. But there's so much he doesn't know about this situation. As much as possible, he needs to avoid battles. And furthermore, he needs to remember to equip this weapon. His gun. Fighting demons empty-handed is like the same as suicide. Yeah, equip it, equip it. I gotta remember that. I'm sure I'll remember that. Anyway, bookcase. There's a bookcase here. So, Casio picks one off the bookcase, flips through it, and inside it's all blank pages. What is with this book? But the other books are all the same. They don't have titles, they don't have contents. This is unsettling. Just why is this bookcase here in the first place? We could try to leave this room already, but 
Kelsey won't go anywhere until we investigate everything. Uh, anyway. The design is old, but it's a regular mirror. It doesn't seem new, and there it doesn't seem especially new, but it's not worn out from use either. That's when he noticed something unusual. What catches his eye is this on the back of his own hand. A mysterious crest. Well, what's this? This wasn't here before. Without a doubt, it's been only been here since he got, came to this room. Going by the feel of it, it's not a type of curse. It doesn't seem like there are bad effects to it, so for the moment, let's wait and see what happens. If, we're, if he wants to do something, he needs to understand what he's working with first. For now, until he understands it, he needs to prioritize understanding the situation. So in addition to being some kind of investigator or something, he's... realistically cautious about dealing with stuff. Anyway... It looks like an old table, but it's pretty new. It doesn't have a lot of scuffs or marks or dust. Really, at first he thought it was an old building, but it doesn't seem like it's from the old, eh, like it's from these old time period. The construction and composition is extremely old, but so it doesn't seem like a modern building, certainly. But it seems like it was, it's stocked with regular, regular everyday items and things, but it doesn't have any electrical outlets. It's like a replica of an old building. And could I have wandered onto some kind of movie set or something? But even considering it that way, it's still weird. It seems it's like this room is used as a regular room. So where is this? Could it be some foreign country way back in the undeveloped world? Hmm. It's a regular pot. And inside is just me is just water. So into the water filling the pot, Kazuya dips the scrap of paper he rips. After confirming nothing really happened, nothing has really happened to it. He carefully takes a sniff of what's in there. Although he really doesn't have the courage to drink any of it, at this point it doesn't seem to be out of the ordinary at all. In the past, people used this kind of pot to store alcohol and water. At least I've heard that. Eh, well, no way. The water doesn't seem to have gotten stale or anything, nor evaporated completely or evaporated out. Since this thing has been filled with water, not much time has been passed. Great, can I leave the room now? So the corridor seems to go along that way. We thought it was just a small building, but it looks like it's a pretty big one. Just what is this place? Oh, great. Explanation time, right? Everybody, can you hear me? 
So all of a sudden, there's a voice in his head. Apparently the voice of a young girl. It's not that he's hearing it, it's more a telepathy or something. Probably, I think you're surprised at all these sudden happenings and all. So I'm going to explain to you here what's going on. First of all, I'll start with the conclusion. From now on, you all are going to be my food. That voice of hers is too bright for the setting. Well, for the whole situation, really. And this kind of brings Kazia down. It seems the, the current situation is the work of this demon. He's just guessing she's a demon. Well, he's right, but he's just guessing. But as an extra special chance, you have the opportunity to survive. If you can escape safely from there and elude me, once you can do that, you win. And you can get away and I won't eat you. So, in short, this is a game with me and everybody. M me and all of you, really. And if you want to survive, go ahead and escape from there. A game, you say. Of course, my voice doesn't get to her. It's a one-way telepathy, it seems. <laughs> okay then, bye-bye. I'll be rooting for you. And with that, the transmission cuts off. Our surroundings uh, revert back to a disturbing quiet. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, because you kind of expected this a bit. Some kind of demon has subducted him and brought him here. But what's up with this middle-aged style building? Is this one of their hobbies? A really ill-mannered hobby. Well, I guess I better go along with this game thing of hers. This, this demon called Muska, although I'm going to point out she didn't actually introduce herself. Anyway, she said everybody, all of you, that sort of thing. In other words, I'm, aside from me, there are other, a, multipli a multiplicity of people involved in this same situation. And I better go and cha go and save them. So I got the gist of what's going on here. But all the same, I can't shake this sense of unease. That demon has kidnapped me and other people. Is that really all that's happened? Somehow I feel that something bigger than that is at work here. But still, nothing to do but head forward. Well now, I found a human. Question, where did you come from? We came from this, it's a dead end in this hallway. Where did you appear from? But never mind that. You're a Lampas. Oh, you know about me. Since I came here, nobody's known about you. You're the first person I've met who's known about us. So, I don't need to explain. That makes it easy. That's not the point, is it? 
this Lampus is different from the a different person from the Lampus that Kazuya knows. But why is the Lampus here at all? If you want to talk about someone who can draw Lampuses all around for stuff, it's her. Yeah, I think there will be a little explanation later. But anyway, could it be her? She's out to get me for something? In that case, what's up with this Muska person? Ah, this is so confusing. Okay, why are you here? Have you been told to come and eliminate me? Take care of me. You? Why? I really don't understand, but this time nobody's giving us orders. That damn nagging boss has somewhere else right now so we get to attack humans like you just as like just as we like the damn boss is away huh so this isn't her plan hmm yep as expected I don't know what's going on here don't really understand this place I found myself in what is the meaning of this Hmm. Could it be that you understand this situation more than I do? Don't understand this situation more than I do. It looks like you've got some questions. How about I answer them? If you'll become nutrition for me. Um. And going by the Lampuses. disposition here. This isn't going to end quietly, but as much as possible I want to avoid battle. Can't use magic, and for weapons I've only got the one gun. Oh yeah, I need to equip that. Furthermore, my enemies may not be simply this one lamp that's in front of me. Alright, I'm running away. Hey, don't run away! So, run away from the Lapis that's chasing you. If she catches you, it'll be a battle. But you can still dash. And I dash like all the time. And they just move at a walking pace. Anyway, somehow I got away. Yeah, sure you did. Oh no. Oh look. Some nutrition a nutrition candidate is I found a nutrition candidate. Nutrition. That's what people are to, yeah. This seems like a different one than the one before. But I don't want to fight. Yep. A direct battle is a measure of last resort. As much as possible, avoid. Gotcha. And a spawner behind me again. Was she here a second ago when I was around the other side? Okay. It looks like they won't chase me this far. So that... That, oh, a young monk? It looks like he didn't notice me. So has that guy been caught by Muska as well? I need to hurry and protect him. It's dangerous here. Yeah. That was the first time spotting him. Just. Letting you know, that was the first time sp we spotted him.
Hey, deja vu? Is this deja vu? And here Casio notices he remembers this room. No doubt about it. This is the a room that he came to before. But that's weird. Didn't feel like I went back on my own path. So why am I here again? Yeah. Maybe there was, without doubt, there's some kind of trick going on here. Next time he needs to be careful about where he's going. I would have left it at that, but there's something they said here. I passed it by a couple times now. And this is a Lampus lamp. So this is where someone has become a sacrifice. Apparently when a Lampus catches a human and makes them into nutrients, they turn into this kind of thing. How unfortunate, right? Alright, back to here. This room again. Definitely, I haven't been turning around. If Muska called this a game or whatever, there should be a way to get through it. A game without a solution isn't very much fun, right? There's got to be a way to figure out this trick. Well, it would take a long time to wait until he figures it out. And I think three or four more times and he would tell you, yeah, you need to go back. And if you keep going through without going back, he'll eventually just like shout at the player, no, go back that way. You're doing it all wrong. But anyway, I'm going to save you some time and say that's what happens. And here we are. Yay, I got out of the loop. That was a pretty good trick she, that Miska thought of. Is if it goes on like this, I got a bad feeling about how it's going to be ahead of me. Well, well, well. An ambush! So there's one way out, and it's blocked. All right, give it up already. Time for nutrientizing. Don't worry, I'll make sure it feels real good to you. No, stay back! So, by way of deflecting, or an attempted deflection, thrusts his right hand out, trying to reject the Lampus's approach, and he summons a strong will, and with the power of that will, his magic power, which he should have lost, is called forth. And the, the Crimson Lotus Flames do this. Gah, it's hot. I'm bad with flames. My body's burning. <laughs> so, I was able to use magic. Should have lost the ability, but now it's working. But now's not the time to think about that. The Lampus' body is being wrapped into Crimson Lotus Flames. If she's left like that, she'll probably uh, she'll probably get burned to death. <laughs> no, please save me. I'll burn, I'll die. Ah, I can't leave her like this. So Kazia drenches the Lampus with water from a pot. Not like she wasn't standing literally next to a pot. Maybe she can't touch water herself? Bleh, anyway. Are you okay, Lampus? It seems like, by the looks of it, the majority of her body is alright. And the parts that were burned, as you watch, they start healing. Yeah, oh, that was surprising. I didn't think flames would just burst forth. I'm sorry. 
I do don't know how exactly. You're a weird human. I'm the one who is attacking you. You shouldn't need to apologize. Well, you wanted to go ahead through here, right? Since you saved me, I'll let you get away. Hmm, well, thanks. Well then. Hey! You're just going to go like that? Huh? I've been warned. I've been wounded by those birds. If you're a human man, then you'll take responsibility, right? It, these burn wounds, you say. No matter how you look at it, you've completely healed. Oh, I can't be a wife anymore. Although I don't know what a wife is. Uh, these girls are pretty uh, carefree, aren't they? So, at times like this, you should take responsibility. Oh, where is a... No. Where is a gentlemanly human who will take responsibility for this kindly? Okay, she's just ignoring what I said. Alright, fine. You want to come along? Come along. Even if I told you you can't, you wouldn't listen to me anyway, right? Anyway, right? <laughs> well, you understand, don't you? Actually, without humans around, this case is really boring. But anyway, don't worry. Demons keep their promises. I won't do anything bad anymore. And I won't attack you. So then, we're companions from now on. Take good care of me. This face is kind of cute. The uh, portrait there. That one expression I really liked. So, Lampus is in our party now. Okay, then. By the way, what's your name? Since we're friends now, I should call you by name, right? Kazuya. My name is Kazuya. Kazuya? Ah! Could it be the human that... that uh, broke out from the shelter with a, with a Lampus? Overcoming the violent... violent opposition of that damn boss. You broke out of the shelter for it. A passionate rendezvous. The way you're describing it is... Apparently some facts were right, but she's... Uh, embellishing a little. So, that's who you were. If that's the case, you should have said that from the start. So, let's get along well from now on. Kazu, yeah? Yeah, I give up. How am I going to explain this to my Lampus? Oh, he's good friends with one of them, huh? Maybe the passionate rendezvous wasn't such an embellishment. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the plot of most of these connected games. Anyway. So, if we're in the party, this is... This isn't the first time that he's gotten along with a Lampus for adventuring purposes. So, he basically understands her personality. She's a good ally to have around. By the way, Lampus, why were you... why did we get here? At the very least, the one that the Lampuses call the damn boss, Hecate, doesn't seem involved with this. Yeah, putting it into words, it, it sounds like a strange story, but some weeks back, we lost communication with, that damn, with our damn boss. After that, Lady Hera 
called everybody together, and in that and in that place, a strange black vortex appeared. So Hera is Hecate's mother. After a certain affair, the remaining Lampas is gathered together. A black vortex. And that's the same as with Kazuya. Drawn into a bizarre black vortex and showed up here. And with that, a great number of my kind were drawn into this thing. Well, I too came to this world like that. This world. Right, this world. The world that we inhabited is a different one than this world, it seems. In other words, another world. I know I'm not using other world, other words because Japanese just conveniently has two different words that two different things that say another and well another world so that black vortex was some kind of gate yeah that's what Miska said that gate was what brought us through to this world you were called out to this world by whom is this the work of that demon called Muska? Yeah, actually, Muska is another one that was called forth. At least she said so. I don't know if it's true or not, but it didn't seem like she was lying. But it's certain that her Lady Hera didn't do it. She really hates interference with other worlds. Hmm. Putting it together. I and La the Lampuses and Muska as well by somebody have been called forth into this world. We got to meet Muska right after we arrived here. She seemed a lot more knowledgeable than we did. And then Muska started this game of hers. We were told that if we helped with the game, we could attack all the men we wanted. And you went along with it, is what you're saying. Yep, they're pretty carefree like that. So, she doesn't know a whole lot that you'll details beyond that. Still, to think that we were drawn into another world. By whom, for what purpose, they did that, we've got to find out. Uh, but more than anything, we've got to escape from here. That's how we start it. But there's one more thing that's bothering me. Not why, just now, was I able to shoot fire? Me, as I am now, don't have any magic power left in me. Or at least I shouldn't. Well, Mis Miska said this, so... Miska said this, but... In this world, magic is easy to use. In the environment, there's a great deal of magic essence. And if you've got experience in handling magic, then it's easy to do. So if you've got just a little bit of magic power, you can, you can fire out magic like that. Even a species like me, which isn't really connected with magic, could do it. Maybe. Well, 
as it were, I did have some some degree of magic affixed to my soul there. So, in this world, it's enhanced. Huh. But the magic which he was used to using it was more or less different. If your world changes, do the techniques change as well? Heh. <laughs> But, all the same, that's a good thing to hear. My magic's finally returned. And I will, thankfully, put it to good use. Now, thanks for everything, Lampus. Thanks to you, I've understood the situation better. Well, if you want to thank me, no matter what, why don't you have a shot in inside of one of my uh, tentacles? Uh, let's hurry on ahead. Yeah, of course you would ask for sex. So, like this, we've gotten a good, reliable companion. Reliable in quotation marks, of course. So, let's continue escaping this labyrinth with Atlantis. Hey, it's a new human. Hey, boy, are you free? Why don't you play with us? And after playing with us together, just pick the one you want to be a, a lamppost with. Uh, sorry, but I'm busy. I'm going to have you guys sent back to the hell you came from. So now we can use magic. So is that the only reason why you're not going to run away? Anyway, he says, now I don't need to run away. Our Lampus also says she'll fight with us too. Just because they're the same species, she's not going to hold back. Ah. If I had done that better, I could have gotten away with it. Out any fights. Haha. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, come on. The Lampus has said to wait up, and that was chasing the priest guy. That guy, he's pretty damn fast. He's not just fast. He had good, di he perfectly understands the spacing with his opponents too. If he were just running, he wouldn't be able to do it. If he were just running, he wouldn't be able to move instantly and just like that. He's pretty well, pretty well familiar with running and getting around enemies. Maybe that's what kind of game he comes from. Oh, look at that. There's a human over here, too. Let's do something fun together. Well, looks like there's no talking our way out of this. Let's do it. Oh man, he's fast. Could that be the rumored Monster Dash Boy? Uh, Monster Dash Bunk? Something like that. Hey, look at that, there's a human over here. We hear that a lot around here. Well, good timing. Give me your essence. Yeah, she's asking for sex. This demon with that yellow color. Could it be a Pika? Oh, oh. Better not let those words, that word pass my mouth. It's inviting interference from 
very dangerous entity. Oh, by the way, I'm not a Pikachu. Don't say it yourself. I was desperately holding back from saying it. Well, anyway. She just said to give up my essence, so... She's the same kind of demon that I've been dealing with up to now. Well, I've always ex learned from experience that demons can't be judged by how they look or their words or deeds. Shouldn't let your guard down. Alright, sorry, but I work as a devil hunter. I'm used to eliminating demons like yourselves. If you intend to interfere with my escape, I'm going to pick you off one by one. Oh, we've got a serious human over here, huh? I better take this carefully and run away if it looks bad. Um, I'm kind of telling you to run away now. Yeah, these guys don't go along with his vibe, do they? But still, without letting our guard down, we better beat her up. Help me, it's a devil hunter. We're all going to be hunted out. We're going to be massacred just like a bunch of harmful beasts. By this beast who wears the skin of a human. I'm not going to do that kind of crap. Don't go saying things that are get me misunderstood. Those foxes are pretty good at running away too. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen one attack a human without drinking during it though. Lampasa. You know those guys? Yeah, they came along to this place with the same timing as us Lampuses. And they're demons of a similar type. And just like us, they were brought along as a big conglomeration. Whole... There were some leashes. Leashes of foxes, you know. That were transported here. There's a pretty good number of them. So... When they came here, they went along with the with Muska's idea as well, so they're cooperating too. In as far as that is concerned, they're the same as the Lampuses. So they get to attack human human males as much as they like. With that condition, they agreed to cooperate. But we Lampuses don't really get along with them that well. They're always drinking and causing noise. Causing a ruckus. And so we haven't coordinated with them all too much. That's about all we know. Is that so? So, those fox girls are also a group of demon beasts that came from another world. And here they... So, here in this place from various different worlds, humans and demons have been transported. Perhaps that that guy who looks like a monk he came from the same world as well. Now I better catch up to him and start protection. All right, better get going. We need to escape from this damn game.
Well, if demons like me, well, like us, lose our bodies, we get sent into a reincarnation by force. We are. They go into a reincarnation cycle, regardless of their will or not. But humans like Kazia here don't get to go like that. So I'm going to keep along with you until we can go home. So once we're safely home, why don't you introduce me to a man I can have some fun with, let's say. Yeah, she's talking about killing somebody and turning into a lamp with him. Well, if we get out of this game with Muska and return to our world, well, that is our goal after all. Better hurry forward. He's here, the Devil Hunter. I heard about him. He's trying to make us May Cry, isn't he? Devil May Cry reference. I don't know, I'm not. If I could, I'd like to settle this peacefully. This is the work of that fox girl that ran away just now. She's been, uh, I don't even know if you call it a rumor, but she spread these accusations around. So you're going to hunt us down like harmful beasts? Fine then. In any case, we really are harmful beasts. But that doesn't mean we're going to let you hunt us that easily. You demon wearing the skin of a human. We'll show you what harmful beasts are made of. No, look. Yeah, we can't get a word in edulized like this. Before we get beaten down, we better fight back. Curiously, each one of these fox girls is labeled with a letter. Those first four that spoke were A through D, and now we'll get E and F. Oh, is this a festival? Human, dance with me. It's that devil hunter that's come to hunt us down. If it goes on like this, we'll all be turned into cheap furs. I don't know, you don't have much fur on you. You'd make better leather than fur. Man, Kazuya, you're killing them. Probably figuratively. So, what's this, what's this? We're really getting fired up around here. And this one's named Fox Girl H. And she comments on her own name. Hey, Fox Girl H is a pretty erotic name, don't you think? Well, I really am erotic, though. Yeah, that's a Japanese thing. No way, everybody. This is the devil's work. Well, naturally. The fox girls that I defeated aren't dead. They're unconscious, or possibly faking dead. And anyway, the majority of these just passed out drunk. Far from wounding, and we didn't even touch them. Yeah, this is a pretty good pile. We only beat up six. In any case, with this, there aren't any fox girls that are interfering with us. Let's keep going forward. Oh no, you. What have you done? The foxes. What have you done to them? You, you've got to run. This demon wearing the skin of a human, he'll kill you too. What are you saying? 
don't go giving people the wrong idea. You, you, that's not right. This is, these guys, they quickly run. I can't leave you and run away. I've got to take care of the wounded somehow. There are already no survivors. At the very least, tell the others, our other friends, warn them. God. Ah, no way. I've got to go tell the other foxes. God damn you, dumbass. Yep, we've been completely misunderstood here. What the hell are you saying here? Saying that kind of stuff. Do you have a grudge against us? Hey, hey, hey. I can't drink anymore. Yep, drunken ramblings. Huh. Okay, so with that, she completely passes out drunk. Boy, these guys are troublemakers. Yeah, I don't think there's much point in talking these girls out of this. These foxes, when they're drunk, they can't follow a conversation properly. Well, I better fix this misunderstanding they caused. All right, let's follow him. No, don't follow me. Hey, wait. It's not what you think. It's a misunderstanding. But damn, is he fast. We're not going to be able to catch up with him like this. Yeah, why don't we just leave him to his own devices? He doesn't show any signs of getting tired anytime soon. Well, no matter how fast he is, he's got some kind of limit. If he gets ambushed or surrounded... Oh no! Oh no! Eh. <laughs> eh. Nowhere for you to run anymore. You seem to have some very tasty essence. I'm going to enjoy some with a glass of... With a... Do we do glasses of sake? Or, or, or is sake pouring into others? Whatever, she's thinking about what kind of alcohol will go best with um, him. Looks like he's been caught. We've got to hurry and save him. Would you believe... When this happened, I immediately found a way to break the game. I figure, let's just leave him to his own devices and play around a bit. And... If you come back to this square, this event plays again. This whole event. So yeah, you should be wary if you play this game all too soon from when I published this video. And now we have this conversation again with Invisible Byakunin. Oops, I gave away his name. Anyway, he's invisible now because the character is actually in a different place. He can't be here now. All right, great. And come up and do this. Same thing. Same invisible guy. And I've locked it. Won't react because it's something that needs to happen can't happen. So don't do this, guys. You'll have to restart to the title screen by hitting F12. Notice in the upper left, this is version 2.31. So don't do what I did in version 2.31. Perhaps in a later version they'll fix it. So this is before I did that idiot thing. Am I wrong for wanting him to suffer a bit for being a dumbass? No, I don't think I am. Alright, this is the... Fox Gang's secret technique. The Fox Wall! Well, all we did was get up in a line and surround him, though. 
Oh, this is bad. You, just you wait, we'll save you. Oh no, the beast wearing the skin of a human. Stop calling me that, Jesus. I'm just a hu normal human. Normal human. Anyway, the detailed explanation will come later. For now, we've got to mop the floor with all of these fox girls. If you say stuff like that, you'll be misunderstood again, you know? Uh, let's beat up these fox girls in to such a degree that they don't die. That didn't really improve it. Run away! And they get away. And we saved it. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm telling you, I'm not going to do anything to you. You were tricked by those drunks back there. The majority of them were passed out from drinking too much. And the ones that we did beat up, we didn't take their lives. It, is that true? But you're carrying weapons and using attack techniques. Well, it's true that we need to use attack type things in order to for defense. But it's for our protection. But it's we use it only for our own protection. Is that true? He looks at us with doubt in his eyes. But it seems like he's listening at least. Anyway, let's get out of here together. At the very least, would you tell us your name? I'm called Byakunin. Currently, I'm an apprentice to an occultist. I'm in training. A uh, occultist. He's misunderstood as us as some kind of dangerous person, but he seems pretty suspicious himself. So then, who are you? My name is Kazia. I'm a devil hunter. This devil hunter is what? Note that he doesn't know how to pronounce devil hunter properly. Like, the time period is from, you know. Yeah, I take requests from people and from organizations to eliminate demons, solving problems of that sort. Your... Grat, I had a good word for this and it slipped my mind. An exorcist, right. I was gonna call him an exorcist. So you are an exorcist then. He looks disturbed by this. Maybe he's got a bad image of demo hunters. Well, we say eliminate, but our main our main means is through uh, negotiation. These weapons are also specially made to send demons back to the demon world. I guess that's a feature of his game. So you're not actually killing all the things you're killing, they just go back to the demon world. Anyway, there are times when our, our negotiations don't go through and we do have to fight back against those that attack us without listening. Hey, I'll testify that Kazia is not a dangerous person. He's actually quite kind and gets along with people. You are not a Kodama, are you? Oh, you know her. To think in your world too that 
a kodo kodama would also exist. Yeah, probably some. Well, it's from Japanese folklore, so it's not surprising a couple of the Japanese games would both have a, that particular name in it. I'm a Lampas, and strictly speaking, I'm not a plant at all. I'm a demon. I like to. No, I'm a demon who attacks men of the Alderaune shoe. Alderaune type. Family. Yeah, there. The Alderaune family. Actually, I'd like to have a union with a human, but thanks to circumstances, I'm currently working with Kazuya here. Lampas, it's nice to meet you. Kazuya, you too? I'm sorry for being rude. I don't like the people I've met who have been exorcists before, but it seems that you aren't that type of person, Kazuya. Hmm. As expected, someone near you. As expected, your experience with this was different. Someone with a similar job type did some bad things, huh? Anyway, thanks for understanding. Let's get along well, Byakuya. Byakunin. So then, how did you get through? By what way did you get to end up here? Were you drawn into a black vortex as well? Yes, that's true. You're quite knowledgeable. My master and I, where we were, a black vortex appeared and... Well, once I came to, I'm alone in this weird place. And I'm being chased around by the fox girls. Remember back when we first saw him? Fox girls didn't appear for several screens after that. But set that, setting that aside. Yep, seems like you're the, just the same as we are. Drawn in by a black whirlpool and brought to this world. And me too. Kazuya and I come from the same world, actually. I've overheard some of the foxes talking. It seems like this place is different from the world that we came from. Yeah, that seems correct. You and I seem to have come from rather different worlds. In my head, I heard a voice called Muska. Reminder, she didn't actually call herself anything. But anyway, <clears throat> heard a voice called Muska. This seems to be some kind of play that's for her entertainment. Yeah, I heard that too. We don't have any choice but to play along with this game and escape from here. Byakunin. From now on, let's take action together. If we cooperate, we could be able to pull through safely. Yes. I would be glad to let you. Please let me help you. Yes. So Byakunin's one of our allies now. But still, I'm worried about my master. Where, just where is she? And if she was drawn in at the same time as you, Byakunin. Hmm. Well, this Shisha, this master of yours, is it a pretty old person? Uh, yes, he, she's pretty well. She has experienced many years. Of course, she's 
She is far more than I a reliable person to have around. Now he said he was an apprentice ec occultist. In that case, this master of his is an elderly exorcist then. If we could get this person on our side, it would really be, go a long way. Got to search her out somehow. My master also has probably ended up in this other world somewhere. Although I'm not at a level where I should be worrying about her. Well, he's worried. That, that is, my master is, to me, a very important person. Why is he, why are you getting red-faced at that? On the one hand, an old master, old, an old master occultist, and on the other hand, a young a apprentice boy. Well, I should explain I say she because first we've met Magatsu, Magatsu, in the first chapter, briefly. We know she's a girl. But you know how it is in Japanese. The pronouns don't give away genders. Or rather, they don't use pronouns as often as, they, as we do in English. So in Japanese, they have not mentioned that Magatsu is actually a female. Kazuya has assumed that the master here is a male and an old guy. And they've got that kind of relationship, so yeah. He's got the misunderstanding this time. Anyway, he's thinking to himself, this relationship is not simply master and apprentice here. Probably a forbidden relationship. Yeah, this sounds like pederasty, doesn't it? Love is free. Maybe it's just a love that I don't understand. Well, now, aren't you open-hearted, Kazuya? It'd be nice to meet her, your master. Yes. Well, I'm sure that'll be a stunning reveal to Kazuya when, when it comes around. So, everything starts from us escaping from this place. Now the Byakunin is on our side. Maybe we'll be able to pull through. Hey, um? Yeah, what is it? I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm bad at fighting and things. Very bad. So, I don't think I'm going to be of much help here. I'm I'm confident in my speed, though. Well, defending civilians is a devil hunter's job. If it comes to a fight, you can just hide behind me. I'm sorry for not being more useful. Very sorry. It's just that I'm so bad at, with fighting. Whoops. Press the button twice. Eh, Casio was encouraging him. Anyway. Just leave it to us. We'll protect you. Oh no. A great stone is blocking the path. Well, this is troublesome. We got to search for another way around this. Hmm, a stone of this size? Leave it to me. So Byakunin goes and stands in front of the great stone. Set your feet. Byakunin throws a sharp punch, and the great rock is reduced to the rubble. Here, we should be able to pass now. <laughs> so, you're bad at fighting, was it? Hey, 
a looking ingen. Oh, a human. Furthermore, they both look tasty. The ones that beat them get to eat them, right? Let's get this done. Well, then, I'll leave the fighting to you. Don't leave it to us, you're plenty strong. Good punch, good punch. Falcon and Senpai, go get him. Ah, ah. This, this is different from what you said before. No kidding, you dumbass. You destroyed a damn boulder and you're scared of these fox girls. I... I put such violence to work. Well, your words are saying you have some regret about it. But those attacks didn't have any hesitation to them. It seems that it's simply that you don't like fighting. But you're actually quite used to it. Hmm, well, there is that kind of thing that's happened to me. Yeah. I convinced you just like that. Rather than saying you're used to fighting, it looks like you're really... you, you Your face is showing you're used to bashing in bad guys. Hmm. By the way, Byakunin, on the back of your hand... Oh yeah, of course he's got one. So this tattoo looking thing is on the back of his hand too. It's just the same as on the back of Kazuya's hand. Uh, this. Since I came to this world, it just appeared. Hmm, yeah, same as mine. Lampus, do you have one? Nope, looks like I don't. The others of my kind also don't seem to have them. Well, she interacts with them on a regular basis, I'm sure. But it seems like I've seen something like that recently. Where wa where was that? Uh, she thinks and thinks, but she doesn't seem to remember. It's a strange seal crest, this thing. But it doesn't feel like it's a bad thing, somehow. Yeah, I'm of the same opinion. Probably it's a type of protection magic, I think. Well, it's not bad. But still, we don't know what it is. And why only Byakunin and I get this crest, huh? More explanations. This is a fox statue. Just ahead of us we can see stairs, but this strange statue is in the way and we can't continue. Oh, this again. To think that in another world we'd be seeing this. This is a statue that the fox girls can, trans can transform into. And if they're like this you can't pass through. So, you can't demolish it like that boulder before? Eh? Have you no pity? So, these foxes... Well, it'd be just too pitiful to kill her like this. These fox statues, if I can't do anything to from the front or the sides. You need to... Circle around to the back. Certainly there's got to be another way to get around there. Hmm. Another route, huh? Alright, let's take a look. Yeah, it pees me off to have to shut up and water off. Take this! Pollen and... Pollen and honey attack. I guess it's a pleasure attack. Oh, whatever. 
Well, looks like we can't get to the stairs this way. As Byakunin says, let's look for another route. All random encounters again. Have you noticed anything about these rooms? Like a lot of them resemble each other. That's going to be a touch of a plot point later. Alright, this is that fox statue from before. Looks like we've managed to circle around behind it. So then, please watch this. Take the fox, fox statue's tail and... Yeah! So Byakuya steps on the fox statue's tail. Mugya! And it disappears. And just like this, you step on their tail from behind. Once you do, you'll be able to pass through. But stepping on their tail like that, don't you think, don't you feel a bit of pity for them? Well, I guess so. But I'm, I completely got used to it. Eh. You've done it so many times that you've gotten used to it. Stepping on foxtails. Uh, uh, well, truly I cannot deny that, but... Uh, Byakuya, you're a dumbass, but you're hilarious. <clears throat> Looking at your face as you stepped on that tail, you seem to be having fun. Byakunin, do you actually like picking on monster girls? He's going to picking on them. I, I'm not so strong as to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've deal. We're we have learned how to deal with the fox statues. Circle around the back and step on their tail. Oh. Hmm. Oh. In my uh, trial run, I forgot to come over here. Anyway, Byakunin's saying, these beds should be, oh no, these are, if I recall correctly, sleeping platforms that are called beds. We can sleep on these safely. We can rest on these safely. Yeah, these beds are pink colored. Kazuya, do you have a problem with the color of your bedding? Uh, no, it's nothing. It'll be fine. Probably. Maybe in his setting, sleeping on pink bedding means bad things. Oh, Lampus might be confirming that. In our world, it's different. Probably. It'll be fine. Demons won't come for you in your dreams. Oh, so that's what happens. Demons in your dreams. It seems like a troublesome world that you came from. So anyway, we can recover here if we need to. Damn you, random encounters. Hey, I thought the Lampuses and the Fox Girls didn't get along. Ah, this place. Good afternoon, I don't feel like fighting. Oh, that's good. Bye now. Bye-bye. But anyway, we'll be meeting again. Hmm? No explanation given. Hmm? This is... We just came here. Ah. Yeah, I recognize that fox girl there, too. Well, you're back soon. Well, do your best. Yuck, 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 yuck. Here again. It seems if we don't take the right, right route, we'll be sent back to here. The right route, huh? It's a test of our memory. I don't have any confidence in that, huh? How about I throw it all on YouTube? 
Yeah, Lampas is kind of like that. And yeah, everything except the route I'm taking goes back to that room. Here's another event. Hey, look, it's a cross. It's a cross intersection. If you're a man, then go straight forward. Should I trust her? Hell yeah, let's trust her. Oh, I was wrong. Sorry. Yeah, as an apology, take this drop. And we get a Lampus dropped. I'm gonna presume that if I fought enough Lampuses, I could steal from them or they would drop some of those. But I'm not big on fighting a bunch of enemies around here, so we'll just take that one Lampus drop. All right, intersection, guess what you need to do? Another turn around and go back situation. So, to think that turning around and returning would be the correct decision. Kazia, you really understand this well. Well, I've gotten through a lot of situations in my day. If you aren't flexible in your thinking, it could be a life or death matter. Oh, Kazia. I could learn a lot from you. I solved this problem exactly the same as that before, is what I'm not saying here. But do you remember when we first saw Byakunin? That was before the first the first instance of that particular puzzle. So Byakunin should have gotten through one of those himself. Oh, anyway. A human? A commoner? Oh no, a monster! No, no, we are... It's alright. We've come to say, we've come to the rescue. Are you injured? Ah, he really is used to this. Well, I'm not injured. I've been forced to run around and I'm dead beat, though. Yeah, seems like he's not injured. Although mentally he's very uneasy in this case. Is that so? None injured. So, what is your name? At times like this, you have to use your head and get your. try and get around the problem. He's a victim, but he's confused, so you've got to calm him down. Return him to a more balanced state of mind. My name is Tony. Say, you. What is happening around here? Yeah. I'm investigating what's happened. Could you tell us about what happened up to this point to you? What up to this point? you ask. Were you also sucked into a black whirlpool? A black whirlpool? I've never seen anything like that. Hmm, you haven't seen it. So, how did you come to be in this place? How did I come, you ask? This is the village where I live, Finoa. Oh, a native of this, uh, hell hole? How do we describe this? Finoa and Tony. A village in which he lives. As speculated before, this looks like the Middle Ages or early modern period kind of thing. Yeah, of course, at the same time, a lot of questions arise. But before, in order to get through to the bottom of this, we've got to stick to our questioning. So, 
You've just been living a perfectly normal life in this village, when all of a sudden your surroundings became strange. That's right, that's right, that's what happened. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I'm so scared. In my head, someone called Muska talked about a game. You've got to save me. Please save me. Mm. Well, before this, I've also worked on cases like this. Through the interference of demons, people's houses are transformed. Yeah. I've had experience of that in my world. In which case, this, uh, he can tr he can believe what the breadth of what's going on here. A demon's kekai, a kind of a territory that they take control of. can change the space-time into a kind of labyrinth. In that case, this guy probably lived here to begin with. And through bad luck. In this case, he got wrapped up in this. Well, nobody's getting wrapped up in this without some bad luck, it looks. Alright, I understand. Let's escape from here together. Can you stand? Uh, yeah, I'm finally calming down here. It's good that you guys came. So Tony goes to stand up and at that instant... Unsettlingly, my heart skips a beat. K Kazuya, I got a real bad feeling about this. Everybody, now, now, get out of here. Oh, look, a new friend. <clears throat> nice to meet you. Visitors from other worlds. I say, but I came from another world myself. You're Miska. Visible panic just standing in front of her. I feel it on my skin. This one is completely different from the slacker level demons we've been dealing with up to now. Even though you're not familiar with this world, you're doing pretty good. Working together, you've come this far. Except for Tony, I guess. Oh. You're shivering with fright there. You look so tasty. Let me have a bite. So, Miska comes up to Tony and... Just like that, starts kissing him. Ah! Tony raises up a scream, and his body flails jerkily. And although his body is flailing violently, he can't get away from Muska's kiss. Oops. Wrong button. Okay. Sorry about that again. Vyakunen made to go and stop this, but... Kazuya here is saying, don't go. It's too late to save him already. Uh, that's not good. So, tasting the kiss of death. Tony is uh, drying up there. As we watch, his essence is getting sucked out of him. Hmm. How tasty. Releasing his lips, Tony collapses in place. 
His corpse has been completely dried, completely dried out, but he's got a contorted look of pleasure on his face. This is cruelty. <laughs> So then, who wants to be my meal next? Of course, both of you at the same time is fine too. Ah, oh, isn't she a sweet girl? So, she looks at us with her strange eyes. The Alchemist, run as fast as you can. Don't even look back. Right. A monster like this. We have no way of winning against her in a front on in a face to face confrontation. The only thing we can do is run away. Alright, here's the deal. You need to run away from Muska. If you're caught, it's game over. Gotcha. Gotcha. I've had more difficult chases before. Yeah, I think it's kind of the limits of the engine. In order to make her really dangerous, they would have to do quite a bit in RPG Maker. I can think about ways to do it, but I can't say that they have the resources to do it. Just adding these, this and that feature. Anyway. Niska saying, oh, you want to play tag? All right, do your best, run away. Oh, we've got to get away from her. If she catches up with us, it's the end. Mm -hmm. At first I thought that maybe one of my script fixes that lets me run was poorly programmed and ruining the game, but then I opened up a I reinstalled just a flat out blank version and you can still just run away. They try and run the tension up, but the dash feature kind of ruins it. Anyway, this is bad, isn't it? Although Kazuya says, whew, we got away. What is this place? Hey, don't make Kazurakas here. There are a lot of wounded people here. This many people hurt this badly. Hmm. There's so many people left in here. Oh well now, this can't be good. And further, they're injured and can't move. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet. So they're screaming for help. Stop it! Don't lay your hands on the civilians! Well, like this, there's no way of winning, but even just a little, we need to buy some time for these people to evacuate. Yeah! Huh, that didn't work too well. Oh, you want to be eaten by me that badly, do you? But the main dish has to wait for later, you know? Muska's strength is on a level with Lucy and Titano, Titano Boa. This is a level that humans can't think to cross swords with. I can't do anything again. Yep, Tony died. And now, well, too bad for these guys, I guess. So then, all you guys, it's dinner time. She's like a whirlwind of whirlwind of eating, if she calls that eating. From one to the next, she just sucks people dry. Yeah, sit there and watch her, why don't you? But, actually. In that small time, from when we were knocked back to when we were standing up, more than five people 
were sucked dry. It says more than five, but I count actually five. Anyway. Oh, I'm so full. This world really is an all-you-can-eat. So then, I'm satisfied now. You guys, I'll eat you when you become tastier. So then, see you later. If you have played her game, it's one of those... One of the things in the game is that if you are more scared, uneasy, and oh, basically terrified, you are tastier to her. That's a creepy fetish, isn't it? So anyway, Musa disappeared. And leaving behind several human bodies. This is too cruel. To so simply kill humans like that. It's a sad thing. But amongst the demons there are those who are like that. This isn't even my first time dealing with demons of that nature. They think of humans as simply food for themselves. Dinner courses. They consider them nothing more than prey. In any case, with this we were able to get away for now. And for what reason, we can easily understand. The flesh and spirit of a human who is shivering with fear to this demon is particularly delicious. So in order for us to ripen, she's given us time. Can't look, can't have any expectations of being saved by those girls like that time. Probably something from uh, Kazuya's game he's referring to. Anyway, can't let myself be taken over by, by fear and anger. Okay, Fox Girls. Man, what happened here? This is... this is kind of repellent. Oh, foxes. What's happened? Well, I guess we'll find out, huh? Alright, I didn't notice this the first couple times, but... These fox girls have names. In order to... because this conversation is a little complicated if you don't know who's speaking at what point. This one's Yoiko. Probably. My Japanese isn't perfect when it comes to names. Anyway, she's saying we got uh, enticed along by that Miska, but if it's going to go this far, that's repulsive. This one's Nomiko. Saying we were told that we could attack men as much as we want and drink alcohol as much as we want. But we never heard about this sort of cruelty going on. You may call. We're just common beasts that like to get drunk and are weak to desires. But even so, we wouldn't take lives like this. Hmm, that's right, isn't it? The foxes really like to play pranks, but they're not bad monsters in the end. Yoiko. So, with it coming to this, we're a bit... We're a bit lost as to what to do with the scale of this. How big this 
situation has gotten. No, Miko. So, we're not going to chase you guys around anymore. We aren't going to lend our hands to Muska's scheme. You, Miko. If there's anything you're worried about, tell us about it. If it's something we can do, we'll help. Hmm. What's bothering us most is, yeah, as expected, insufficient fighting power. Would you come along with us as an al, as a companion? That's a little. Yoiko said that. Nomiko says that it, uh, coming to a fight with Muska is really highly possible there. And that's gonna be... Yeah, I... No. Yumeko. You got it. I'll come along with you. Ha, yeah. As expected of the most reckless amongst all of us. Yumeko. Yep. Yoiko says Yumi Yumeko is the most reckless of the foxes. And yeah. Nomiko. Are you trying to build up another legend? Is that your plan? Yumeko. Yeah, I'll show them. The fox's true nature. Yeah, it seems like they're really getting fired up. Uh, this kind of tension I'm not used to. Is that really all right, though? I think it's going to be quite dangerous, though. Hey, Byakunen. You and I, one time, got to play a little game of chase, you know? Oh, is that so? I'm really very sorry, but at this time, I can't distinguish your faces that well. I've also heard the rumors about you, here and there. If I can go on an adventure with you, it's a good a good opportunity, I'm thinking. Well then, thank you. I guess this is thanks to Byakunen's virtue, isn't it? Ah, uh, no. I'm still... I'm still quite inexperienced with this. He's quite humble, isn't he? So then, let's take care of each other. And Yumeko has joined our team. It's nice to have more people on our side. With this, four of us. Well, the first topic is probably Muska. Given the strength of Muska, she's well outside the normal for a demon. Hard to say it, but collecting members ad hoc like this just ain't gonna cut it. Egg is expected. Maybe we should get away from here, such as she doesn't notice. Yeah, that would be the number one option. Depending on the circumstances, it might be difficult, though. It doesn't seem like Muska has any intention of letting us get away. From what she said, yeah, it's pretty clear. Um, before we leave, the, the late person's over there. We should do something about it. I want to do something about it. Hmm. Yeah, we can't leave those corpses just like that. I'll help too. Well, with that monster as our opponent, it can't be helped. But 
it's heavy on your heart to be unable to save the people in front of you. Before we're able to get outside, we won't, since we're unable to get outside, we aren't even able to bury them. But we do all we can. So we fix, so we drag them away and fix up the beds. Here, that's really all we can do. So then let's go. Working together, let's survive and get out of this mess. All right, I'm coming along with you. I'll do my best too. Yeah, as a way to cheer up, you want to have a drop? Presumably a lump of strap, like the one she gave us before. Come to think of it, I don't even know what it does. Well, the exit shouldn't be far from here. I get that premonition. Getting out of here is just a little further. But standing in our way is a, ter is a fearsome wall. Up to now, we've always offered to take the civilians with us. But in this case, we say we're going to go for help and for these guys to shelter in place. Although Muska already knows there are humans hiding here, so this is kind of a bad choice, tactically speaking. But, well, we don't have a lot of options. All right, what's up with this book? I feel a strange power. Hmm, is this their first time seeing it? That's right, you only just came to this world. This is a job change book. It's used often. It's used in this world to change jobs. Adventurer jobs. Mm-hmm. Miska also showed it to us. I wasn't really interested, so it went... So the explanation was in one ear, but out the other, though. Adventurer jobs are what? Hmm. Well, I can take a stab at it. In my world, there was a similar, similarly working machine, wasn't there? So, he touches the book, and his experience up to now is analyzed. sorted applied that's what it was supposed to be what is this so if you came from a world like ours that doesn't have a job system a job change system then the experiences that you gained in your original world translate into job experience here I see I wonder if it'll choose a job that's applicable to me. So he gets Master of the Jobs Warrior and Swordsman. It looks like I've gained a lot of skills. Oh, he knows what a skill is in this context. Oh, whatever. Yeah, these are in connection with swords. That's amazing. It looks like it's not even done yet. He's still touching the book and it's still applying his experience. So Kaizia Master's hunter and gunner. Well, that's natural. Up to now I've used quite a few guns. It's still continuing. Kazia, you have an amazing breadth of experience. Kazuya's touching the book, and Master's Mage and Black Mage. Well, my magic experience has been applied in this way. Looks like it's done. So then, 
I'll go next. I, I'm kind of nervous. Well, you're doing training as a monk, aren't you? Probably. You'll become a priest? Hmm. My training is incomplete. Here I go. The Arcanine touches the book and his experience is applied. He masters the job. Priest! Oh. Although it's incomplete. The path I walked looks like it came through. Looks like it was proper experience in the end. And it's not done yet. So from his experience he gets martial artist and Kengo. It's martial artist one and two. Let's just say. Mar martial arts. And with even more experience than as a priest. Well, you have been running around causing trouble all throughout Mahoroba Mountain. Oh yes, Magatsu mentioned Mahoroba Mountain in the last chapter. <laughs> running around causing violence. Ah, Byakunin, what kind of trouble you keep into? Ah, and it's still continuing. Byakunin, it seems you've got a wealth of a wealth of experience yourself. Byakunin masters the job. Prostitute. Alarm. Confused alarm. Just confusion. <laughs> Oh, Fox Girls, I tell ya. There must be some mistake. Y yeah, I guess so. Looks like there's nothing more to say here. Alright, I'll go next. You and my co-touches the book. Thief and Master Thief. Sounds good. Thief. A bandit, huh? It looks like you're up, get up to bad works, don't you? Ah, oh, you say that's. Don't say things that are so mean. Making me out to be a bad guy. Anyway, it's still going. Player. I think the translation goes flirt for this particular job. This doesn't seem useful. Maybe I should change the way I live. Now yeah, keep going. Um, bard? I get, I get drunk and I, yes, I start singing, but that turns into job experience. All right, I'm up next. What's gonna come out? So Lampus gets player and dancer. It's true that when I'm watching TV I do dance, but does that really count? That counts. Does that count? Well, this doesn't seem all too applicable, does it? Let's forget about it. It doesn't seem reliable at all. Piakinen. The others have, aren't going to question you, but I have questions. Dasker it, he's not going to answer me, is he? Anyway, everybody seems to have become explosively stronger. Just like this. Doesn't feel like we're cheating a bit. Now, yeah, this is, you could say, from the beginning, the power we've earned through our life in the older worlds. And in this world, it's become applicable again. Yeah, just like this, we've become a lot stronger. Should 
The fights from here on out should really be easy. And furthermore, it seems that we can change our job to these other job types. Let's not forget to check our job change book. Hey, it automatically changed some of these jobs. All of the jobs. It might have changed the species for our two monster girls. I didn't look too closely. But anyway, what I want is encounter reduction. Oh, this is going to be so nice. No more encounters. Right, the Fox Girls have decided to quit lending their hands to Muska. We can go by without fighting now. Look, a tasty looking human. Give me your, give me your essence. Ah, we're gonna be fighting just like normal. Oh, just one round. Okay. I said no more encounters. No more random encounters. Those fixed encounters you can't get rid of. Anyway. These guys in this region of the maze aren't connected with our leash. They're a different group, so... Yeah, we won't be able to pass by without fighting. Even amongst the foxes, there are factions like that. You should have said that quicker. Come on. So just like before, we get through by beating them up. Huh. And yeah, that's the size of it. But boy, not having random encounters is nice. Mm. There was a group I wanted to t speak to. Ah, oh, here it is. Well, not a group. This lamp says, Earlier I saw a strange Japanese doll. I wonder if that's one of Muska, Muska and Lem's underlings. Japanese doll? It can't be. It can't be, we don't know what, but I have a feeling that's going to be important later. Well, there's a save and recovery point. Oh, a recovery point. You can save anywhere. A recovery point there, which means the yeah, awesome that's coming up. All right. Up to now, this is a different type of stair from what we've seen. I wonder if this is the way out. Dosa! Yahoo! Nanda! What? Is this an enemy attack? Look, look, calm down. I'm the White Rabbit, and I'm not your enemy. In order to guide you, I've come here. You guys, who are carrying such a big load, a big destiny. Yeah, like we're going to believe that. Aren't you one of Muska's... No. At the very least, she doesn't seem to be in opposition to us. In reality, she got behind us and she didn't attack from that angle. Further, right in when appearing saying she'll guide us. Doesn't seem like the kind of thing that a demon would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's nice working with someone who's been around the block a few times. Even dealing with someone that's as suspicious as myself, you listen to what I've got to say. Well, it's also not the first time me meeting somebody like you. But I'm lo not letting my guard down against this surprise attack. 
Oh, as expected of Kazuya. He really does have a breadth of experience. Still, this is going quite well. Kazuya, it looks like you've learned how to use magic again. All of you in the way you fight. Looking pretty good here. As expected of chosen heroes, your dealing with crises is quite high. Chosen heroes, you call us. All right, I'm going to explain this efficiently. I've got to move on to the next group, so I've got to... I'm going to wrap this up simply. First of all, bad guys have appeared in this world from other worlds. Someone called the Lord of Dreams is trying to conquer this world. And with that, the Lord of Dreams went and called forth allies from the, all these other worlds. Essentially, these are the companions of yeah, it's a, basically a group of bad guys. So then the, the world's in a big pinch. But it, when one door closes, another opens. In order to be able to defeat the Lord of Dreams and her alliance from various worlds, seven heroes have been gathered. And those heroes are you. So that's how it is. Do your best and defeat the Lord of Dreams, okay? I see. I got the gist of it. Hey, you understood? So, who is it that called us forth from our world to this world? It, who isn't exactly the right question. It's, uh... The will of history kind of thing. The will of history. Ah, I see, that kind of thing. If we don't defeat the Lord of Dreams, we can't return to our original worlds, can we? Oh, it's nice when the conversation goes quickly. Now, before I've been in places where demons suddenly shoved explanations in my face. Rather than doubting them, it's best to understand them. It's easier on your head. So then, the way you're speaking like a third party, taking it from, taking from that, I'm gonna guess that aside from this explanation, you're not actually going to help us in escaping, are you? Your understanding? Perfect! I'm just a mediator, and I can't directly... And I can't assist directly. Well, I don't understand all the complicated stuff, but mostly I get what we're doing here. So we're heroes that came from a... called from another world. We defeat this Lord of Dreams, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see what's going on here. To think that I am a hero. Ooh. Eh, no. You guys are allies. Your guys are in the Alliance, the bad guys. The heroes are these two, the humans. Huh? So that Muska is, was called forth into the Alliance of the Lord of Dreams. I and Byakunin are heroes who have, who need to stop it. So that kind of monstrous level of existence has been called together in a big old alliance. No doubt about it, this, this world is in big trouble. The seven heroes 
on the back of their hand have a crest. It's collab proof. It's called collab proof. And it's proof that you've been chosen. So that's where we get this, the collab proof. If you break it up properly, you can see it actually says collabo. So, collab proof. Yeah, Kazuya and Byakunin have on the back of their hands this crest. And they look at them. It's the proof that they are heroes that have been chosen to save the world. Oh, that's heavy, isn't it? Alright, that is evidence of collaboration. If you bring all your powers together, you should be able to beat down this crisis. So then, my story is over. It's good that you guys understood quickly. That's nice. So I've got to move on to the next. Ooh, so busy busy. Bye now. Now her teleport out was a little abrupt. Hmm, well, anyway, I didn't understand one bit of that. Kazuya, did you? Hmm, the major points are three. One, in this world, the Lord of Dreams is the root of all evil, and she appeared here. Two, we've been gathered from different worlds in order to defeat this Lord of Dreams. Three, if we don't defeat the Lord of Dreams, we can't go back to our original worlds. So, that's the major points. I guess. Ah, I see. I could learn a lot from you. I have learned a lot, he said, rather. And really, you've understood all that, all those difficult contents in that explanation. No, it's not that any of it was difficult, not one bit. But the way she just tossed them out there makes it troublesome to understand. Ah, as expected of Kazia. Of you, Kazia. You really do have such a diverse experience. Ah, and she called us the bad guys. Well, I kind of was thinking that I wasn't a hero. The harmful beasts of Mahorova come to sow chaos in the world. Kind of looking thing. But the two of you have been a big help to us, haven't you? Definitely. You aren't bad guys. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. Makes me feel a little better. As expected of Byakunen, you are a kind guy. Yomeko, just like Yomeko says. So Yomeko is now talking about some Yomeko. Oh, you know Yomeko. No, oh, didn't I say? Yeah, I'm an acquaintance of your wife. Oh, so you're a friend of the family then. It seems we are, have a number of connections, you and I. Uh, an old friend of your wife, huh? That is a bizarre connection. That, Falconin, you're married? Ah, uh, yes. To a wife who is truly good, too good for me. He's bound in matrimony. He's the one who has more experience than I. Is Kazuya some kind of eternal virgin or something? Mm, anyway, now's not the time to be talking about me. We need to continue onward. Uh, it is as you say, Byakunin. I shall accompany you as we go on. So he's flustered that he's dealing with a married 
uh, boy. Bjarkinen's pretty young, isn't he? Anyway, what's gotten into you, Kazia? Yeah, Kazuya's got all this experience, but apparently he's got no sexual experience. If that'll get him flustered. Anyway, according to the White Rabbit's story, there's this Lord of Dreams we have to deal with. We've been called together, although we're not exactly together with very many of us, in order to defeat her. But... Everything starts with us getting out of here. We gotta punch through Muska's game and escape outside. Funny how that all started about with a conversation about how the stairs are different. Well, it seems the interior has become quite lavish all of a sudden. Furthermore, there's this oppressive feeling Kazuya, my breathing is getting tight. Yeah, no doubt about it. She's here. And she's blocking the exit. It looks like we're not going to get away all too easy here. If she's sitting in front of us, she's not going to let her prey escape. But we've got to go. If we can just make an opening, we can run on out of here. There's really no, uh, no way out other than that. So, while well, Yumeko is being eaten, everybody runs away or something. Or during the opening when Lampus is getting sucked dry. We escape or something. We're not going to be dropping allies in order to get out of here. All of us are escaping. Yes, of course. Ah, oh, those monster girls. At least one of them, Lampus, nominally goes to some other world for a reincarnation. Yeah, according to her setting, anyway. Maybe she, if she died in this world, she would really die like any other thing dies in this world. But anyway... Now we've got to brace ourselves for what's ahead of us. Got to work together and open up a path out of here. Better save. Last time I forgot to save before the final boss and I had to play through an entire chapter just to start this video. It goes faster when I don't have to translate, though. Still, Muska says, Well then, sorry. It's too bad. Although you can see the exit right over there. It's over right here. It's not over right here. We're going to defeat you. And we're going to get out of here. We won't be bent by your games. Hey, <laughs> if you say you shouldn't say such delicious things, you know. Because it'll make you want to plunge you into despair and eat you down to the last bite. Isn't she a sweet girl? All right, desperate times. Let's go. I'll support you too. Well, not much hope of actually winning here, but we should be able to. We should be able to create an opening, and then we escape. So then, dinner time. So she shows her true form. Check out that expression. She's cruel and remorseless and uh, eats, eats people, really. But sometimes she looks really cute.
Yeah, if this weren't on very easy, this would be much more difficult. Here we go. Ouch! Oh, you scraped my elbow. Scraped your elbow. We're fighting so desperately, and that's the level of damage we can do, huh? Right. Taking our face-to-face -face is definitely impossible. We've got to create an opening, but even that seems difficult. And the next moment after he thinks that, this is what happens. What? The crest on my hand is glowing? What's up with this? Well now, isn't this a twist? That... that's... No way! How could this... What's glowing on the back of Muska's hand is... The collab proof. Just the same as Kazuya and Byakunin have. Just the same. Don't tell me. Muska, this Muska, is one of the seven heroes. And no, she's in the Lord of Dreams Alliance. She should be. So then why does she have the collab proof on her? That's right, Lampus saw the collab group and said to her, everybody, I remember seeing this somewhere, but she couldn't remember where. Couldn't remember where, the dumbass. Wait, wait. This crest, it's getting really hot somehow? Thanks to the sudden, uh, sudden distraction, Muska seems a bit disoriented. And during that opening, and we definitely won't let that opening get away. Now, run for it. Right. Hey, wait, wait. What is up with this crest? We don't lend an ear to the voice from behind us. So then, the, just like that, we flew out of there. And we've escaped from Yusuke's game. Oh, aren't you glad? Unlike in Chapter 1 with Laurat and Richie, Richeo fighting against ex Executioner. I mean, even if they could beat her, which they couldn't, there are still two more of them. I mean, at least you don't have to deal with that. Oh, snap! What's going on here? Nemea! Well, well. To think somebody would be able to pull through out of Muska's territory. Oh, this has become a little interesting, hasn't it? Oh, God, don't tell me. This, this can't be. So, having gotten out of the building, we got our escape done. We're in the conquered village. And the nightmarish escape game still has not come to an end. And that's it for chapter two. In how many of these games are there going to be three big bad girls? I wonder. Yep, that being what it is. Here are our heroes for the next part. Rest and... Um, Sanya? Balls. Tanya. Tasa. Well, anyway. That'll be it for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.